for paper champions of the 2017 NBA offseason. My name is Joshua Enviers. If you don't know what a paper champion is, they're really good on paper, but they may not be as great when they're actually on the court together. So let's start off first with the Charlotte Hornets. In my last video, I said I really liked what the Charlotte Hornets did this offseason and with the draft, I think it was actually really solid getting Dwight Howard. Especially when you look at the East, it looks like anything is possible for any team with just somewhat of an inch of talent. And the Charlotte Hornets have a little bit more than an inch of talent. I mean, it looks like they're going to be a solid 6-8 to eight seed in the playoffs, maybe even higher, uh, depending on how everything comes together and injuries and what have you. Last year in the Eastern Conference, I was fooled by two teams, and these two teams were the Indiana Pacers and the Detroit Pistons. I thought they were going to be top teams in the Eastern Conference because on paper, they looked really good. But when they were on the court together, they weren't that great. I mean, the Pacers barely made playoffs as I believe a seventh seed last season. And I fear this might be the same situation the Hornets are going to be in. In my head, I see a solid rotation, a solid team. They added guys like Dwight Howard, signed Michael Carter-Williams, had a good draft. But at the end of the day, it comes down to health and coaching and if the players are able to play together. And I'm not sure if uh, it's going to mesh all in one year. We'll have to wait and see what happens. But I like the Hornets. I just don't want to put them super high on my NBA preview and uh, you know, have another Detroit Pistons and Indiana Pacers case like last year. Moving on, let's talk about the Minnesota Timberwolves. I mentioned these guys in my last video as well. And uh, it's just one of those teams where they weren't relevant for the past, I don't know how many years. Like I said, 2004, uh, they haven't made the playoffs since then. So all of a sudden now they're going to be a top team in the Western Conference. That doesn't seem right to me. I said in my last video as well, 6 to 8 seed. I see that very, very reasonable, especially because they're in the uh, difficult Western Conference. All these teams on this list are, all have that similar case where they weren't making playoffs last season. And now they're apparently one of the better teams or some of the best teams in their respective conferences. And I, I just don't see it. A lot of you guys said you were hyped on uh, the Minnesota Timberwolves as well in the comment section on yesterday's video. I saw some saying top five, uh, top four, and top two, which is kind of crazy in the Western Conference especially. Uh, I mean, it's, it's cool to be hyped. Just don't fall to paper champions, and there's nothing wrong with teams that look good on paper. That's amazing. You know, you'd always hope that uh, GMs are trying to put the best team together on paper that is able to put that uh, talent on the court and, you know, make wins. But that's not always the case. The Minnesota Timberwolves still had an amazing free agency period. I'm not taking anything away from them, but they look too good on paper where it might not translate into production on the court. Once again, I'm going to be bringing up the Pistons and Pacers. They fooled me last year, and uh, maybe one of these four teams might fool you this year. Moving on, let's talk about the Denver Nuggets. The Denver Nuggets are a very weird team, especially within a growing, stronger Western Conference. It seems like they did good. In free agency, they just didn't really do good enough. I mean, they got Paul Millsap. Paul Millsap is an amazing talent, a nice power forward to play alongside Jokic, uh, a lineup of Murray, Harris, Chandler, Millsap, and then Jokic. That's a pretty solid lineup, and unfortunately, it's just solid. It's nothing amazing, and I feel like it's going to be the same situation as it was last year where they may be uh, one game behind the eight seed in the, the Western Conference and they miss playoffs again. But who knows, they could make the playoffs. I mean, if you look at the lower seeds, like the 7th to 8th seed in the Western Conference, uh, the middle of the pack teams, they're, who knows what's going to happen with them. They could be out, they could be in. I mean, if you just look at the, the Wolves, for example, they just got good all of a sudden with the addition of Jimmy Butler. They might not be as good as people think. The Blazers, they haven't done anything in free agency. They might not be as good as people think. The Clippers, they lost Chris Paul. The Jazz, they lost Gordon Hayward. The Grizzlies keep progressing each and every single year, getting older and older. And the Pelicans, although they do have Anthony Davis and DeMarcus Cousins, this is a tough Western Conference, and yeah, anything's possible. I mean, the Nuggets could make it. They look solid on paper. I just don't know if it's going to equal out to winning games and making playoffs. Lastly, let's talk about the Philadelphia 76ers. Uh, this is probably... Uh, the most controversial, I guess, out of this list, considering a lot of people expect big things from the Sixers. But if you look at that roster, it's a bunch of young guys. Markel Fultz, the rookie. 
Uh, Joel Embiid, he's coming off of injury. Ben Simmons, the rookie from last year, the number one overall pick for the, the Sixers, coming off injury, missed the whole season. Going to be potentially a rookie this season, so they're going to have two rookies in Fultz and Simmons. This is a young team. I don't know how fair they do in the Eastern Conference, especially if they can't stay healthy. But luckily for them, the Eastern Conference is looking as weaker than it has ever been. So they could slip in there. They could slide in and make some noise. And, you know, probably depending on who is the first and second seed, they could match up with the Celtics or the Cavaliers. I feel like they'd have a better chance at the Celtics. And it'd be kind of a cool little rivalry, you know. Celtics traded uh, Markel Fultz for the Sixers pick. And they got Jason Tatum. So I'd like to see that matchup if... Uh, the Celtics are two or the Celtics are one and the Sixers are seven or eight. I, I, that'd be an interesting matchup. Who knows? They could be higher. A lot of these teams on this list can be higher than what I'm projecting them to be. I'm not a, a specialist. You're not a specialist. I'm just looking at the team and uh, I, don't, I don't see what a lot of other people are saying that this team is going to take over the East. I mean, buy stock now in all of these four teams that I mentioned. In a year, come back and say how much better than they were the next year than they were this year because I feel like all four of these teams I mentioned will be better next year than they are this year considering this is the, the growing phase they weren't this good last year it's gonna keep improving and we'll see how it goes and uh, how playoffs go for each and every single one of these teams with that said I really hope you guys enjoyed this video leave a like on it if you did and check out some of these other videos on screen right now if you want to see similar content let me know if there's a team I missed uh, that wasn't on this list that you feel like is a paper champion, really good on paper, but may not live up to the potential that a lot of people are projecting them to be this year. I'll talk to you guys later.